Iran reportedly declaring victory just one day after the highest level meeting in decades between the U.S. and Tehran. A senior Iranian military leader saying that his country has strong-armed President Obama into accepting its nuclear rights. Here's the president speaking about that at the U.N. General Assembly. We are not seeking regime change, and we respect the right of the Iranian people to access peaceful nuclear energy. Instead, we insist that the Iranian government meet its responsibilities under the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty and UN Security Council resolutions. So how's that going? Lisa Daftari, Mideast journalist and Fox News contributor, and Peter Brooks, former CIA officer and senior fellow for National Security Affairs at the Heritage Foundation. Welcome uh, to both of you. Uh, I also just want to put out there that uh, it was in the Iranian newspaper uh, quoting a high-level uh, military official in Iran saying the United States has, quote, reached this conclusion that they cannot challenge the powerful Iran. Lisa, what do you think about this? Well, this is uh, the same old... Uh, tactic that we've seen come out of the Iranian regime and it's only a surprise to those who are actually holding their breath and hoping that this president and this new uh, cabinet of his were actually moderate and we're actually have, going to have a different agenda their tone might be different be, might be toned down a bit uh, but it's the same um, agenda and and if we were you're following the Iranian media before Rouhani came to New York it was the same chest thumping and the same you know we're gonna show the Americans and we're gonna ask them what they can offer us and that's exactly what they've done they've posed themselves in a position now where they have the upper hand and they're gonna wait to see what concessions the US can offer them yeah I, I mean you know it, it reminds me of the sort of you can get more with honey than salt Peter uh, and we've, we've seen a difference in attitude certainly between Akbar Ahmadinejad and Rouhani, uh, but is the underlying MO of the Iranians any different now? I don't think so. I mean, what you read, we talked about, Martha, there in the Iranian press is just pure propaganda for internal consumption. And what we're seeing externally is, you know, we, it is the same sort of thing. They're trying to work us here. They're trying to look conciliatory. They're trying to get sanctions lifted without offering anything in return. They haven't said they're going to stop uranium enrichment if we lift the sanctions. They're just saying, you got to stop these sanctions. So we have to be very, very cautious here. It's fine to test their diplomatic intentions and see if they're serious about stopping their nuclear program but we also have to be sober about the fact that they may be playing us for time as they move towards uh, finishing up their nuclear weapons program yeah you know I, I saw an interview that Geraldo Rivera did uh, this morning with one of the top uh, Iranian officials who was here for the UN meetings and you know the take Lisa was that if there is a door to discuss is it possible that the Iranians do want to dismantle some of this because they are truly suffering under these sanctions I mean is that a possibility Right. Well, you know, the, the sanctions are, are not crippling the economy to the extent that the regime is ready to, you know, um, just say that they're going to, to stop with their nuclear agenda. You have to look at the economy in Iran as two different economies. You have the regime's economy, an economy that's still strong, and they have been able to, to find loopholes and to find ways around the sanctions. And then you have the main, the main economy, which is the people's economy. And what the regime has effectively done is to rally people around the flag and create this anti-U.S. sentiment by saying to the people, look, it's the U.S. that's sanctioning you, and passing the burden uh, of the sanctions onto the people, Meaning there's food shortages, there's pharmaceutical shortages, and the people are really suffering. So when we talk about sanctions, we have to be sensitive and realize that, yes, the people are suffering, but it's the, re the regime that's really passing on this burden uh, onto the people. And to answer uh, the second part of your question, will this, the, the sanctions be enough? Uh, it seems as though they haven't been enough, and yeah. we've added many rounds of sanctions, and I mean, we're still seeing the same repetition. Peter, what Lisa's saying seems to be an argument for turning the screws even tighter. Well, absolutely. You could argue that the sanctions brought them to the table, but once again, they could also be acting like, yeah, we're under a lot of pain and stress because of the sanctions, and then start these negotiations that may last six months, a year. I mean, we've heard out of Israel recently, Martha, that a senior official said Iran will have the bomb within a year. So think about it. We have to, we have to be very careful about what we do here in terms, of, uh, in terms of Iran, and don't let us just play us for time, as they've done right. in the past. We've been negotiating with Iran for 10 years now, yeah. since 2003, when we discovered their nuclear program, Tangled, Martha. tangled up in talk uh, while the march goes on behind the That's scenes. Right. Uh, Peter, thank you very much. Lisa, thank many you, thanks. Martha. We'll see you guys.